I, I thought uh, I'm hopefully might be able to add something to the discussion, and that is something, um, you know, in these days, uh, something about the relevance aspect. What I mean with that is um, I just recently found in my basement a, a bunch of old tapes. So everyone over 35 probably know what it is. <laughs> For the people under 35, it's a magnetic device where you can store. It's like an <laughs> offline Spotify. So think Spotify, you can... Yeah, but you can, you can save Spotify on these magnetic thingies from the 80s. But anyway, it, actually, it really actually made me think how actually easy it was for a brand to reach me because I was spending hours in front of the radio, listening to the radio and waiting for the right moment to hit the button. And of course, I listened to radio ads. And of course, if you placed a, a, an ad in my favorite magazine, I saw your ads. Or, you know, with only a few channels around in Germany when I grew up, um, of course, uh, you know, I, I was addicted to Knight Rider and Cold Seavers. And if you placed a TV ad around this, I mean, I've seen that ad. As a matter of fact, I think I still remember some of these ads that were played back then. Um, and that what you probably, so that's me on the far left. Um, so probably what you refer now to as influencer, we call them friends. <laughs> it was like the offline uh, equivalent to influencers and we influence each other whether it was like movies or books and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But if you fast forward now to, to now, actually what happened since a few weeks in my bathroom is that these really weird shower gel with like names like chocolate chocolate cupcake, tasty donut, it just gets wild. And in the meantime, it's now 10 of them. And if I dare to take something away, I get really into problem, uh, like trouble with her. So the point is this shower gel has actually been introduced by a German YouTuber that you never heard of, I never heard of her, I never seen her. Um, my daughter was one of like over three millions that watched her like showing that uh, on her YouTube channel. She has like four million subscribers, about a billion views. She's a 26 year old kid from, from Cologne. And now the shower gel um, is listed in, in German uh, uh, drug, drug markets, uh, how, drug stores? Not drug markets, <laughs> drug stores. Um, and believe it or not, but within its first year, it has, it has now a market reach of 30% almost, without a single euro of marketing spent. So all what she did was basically hold it in the camera, talked about it, and every time uh, her mother walks by, she has to buy the latest taste of that. So this is like how, how things are changing. Of course, she loves Voice of Germany, but she actually doesn't even know on which channel it is because she all watches it uh, offline, like on, on a PVR. And actually, the TV station that she loves is Netflix. That's, that's her TV station. And basically, new music she discovers on, on Spotify. So to say it with the, this year's Nobel Prize laureate for literature, times are changing. And the big question is actually, how do you, how do you cope with that? Like, how do you actually address people like this? And, you know, the point is, this is not an, an, a break, so this is a live baseball game happening in front of them. <laughs> so live, it's not something, so they have like a very short attention span. How do you... How do you interact with like the smartphone zombies like you know chasing pokemons and and like you know clued to their to their first screen basically and, and and chasing a pokemon how do you actually communicate in an environment where we where we could have holograms you know where we could be teleported or how do we actually you know how do we find space in in such an uh, in an environment which is so immersive i mean we're you know, we were secluded from, from the rest and very, very isolated. And this experience, like, who, who had a VR headset on? Who tried it out? Yeah, pretty much most of you. So you know how immersive it is and how realistic it could be, all to the way to... <laughs> <laughs> and you know there are like hundreds of these videos on YouTube because I mean the funny thing is like he it's just a roller coaster ride, right? It's not a horror movie. But it is that immersive and that realistic. Um, imagine what's possible with, with AR, with augmented reality, which I personally think is is the the nicer thing. <laughs> because 
like with virtual reality, I love it for storytelling and everything, but in augmented reality way, I mean, it's just like this mixture of the real environment that really um, is, is filling, I think. Um, what happens if we have self-driving cars and if we are, you know, if we have all these time available now at our hands because we will literally have like hours, you know, that we can spend time on. What do we do with the screens? Like uh, basically not sitting like focused on it, but having our personal uh, screens with that. And how about IoT, like in an IoT environment, like with the Amazon Echo, it doesn't even have a graphical interface. So for me, that's quite a, a challenging question because without any interface, I mean, it basically you only can do something around audio. Um, and if it goes down with, the, with everything getting smaller and smaller and smaller, I mean, for those of you who read Hitchhiker's Sky Through the Galaxy with the Babelfish. I mean, we will have this um, yeah, vision or this future where we'll have something sticked in our ear and it will basically be something very, very smart and, and be with us all day. This is actually an, an earable, which is like life, uh, um, like any communication is like life translated into your language. So, so it's happening now and, you know, in the far, you know, not into the far future, we will just stick our, a screen into our retina and have it there. And on top of that, that was just the tip of the iceberg because, as you know, everything is like faster, faster and more and more and more. So the big question is, like, for me to step it back now, in this environment that I just outlined, uh, what do you do? Like, uh, how can you actually play a role in, in marketing and communication? I think in order to do that, I think, you know, one part of the, of the answer is around like data driven and, you know, cross channel advertising and all the stuff that you're going to hear, um, in, in, in other talks or this afternoon with real time bidding, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one part of the question, uh, answer to the question. Um, my answer is more on a, on a higher level, like on a meta level, like stepping back a bit and thinking about actually how do, we, how can we create meaning or how can we create something that is of relevance to the people? And I would like to, to share some examples with that. So what I mean with relevance is basically it's like this tiny thing between, you know, what the audience actually wants to hear, like whether it's the millennials or the guys chasing the Pokemons or whether it's my older sister and what are we actually able to, to, to give them. And here are some examples. So this one here. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best. So, of course, uh, you know, back then when, when he gave that speech, that was, of course, super, super relevant for, for most of them. And it's still true for today because we, we look up to the sky and it's something very present to us. And, of course, it's highly relevant to us because we see ourselves, you know, traveling there and, and want to conquer space and conquer different stars. So, basically, one very powerful motif is, like, really to address a, a vision, a dream, etc., and that is true even today with, with stuff like SpaceX and, and the travel to, the, to Mars, etc. But it also brings a second uh, topic around it, which is that human nature is like truly competitive. It's, it, it's in our nature. So yeah, we want to see who actually will win the race to Mars and who will be first there. We want to see actually how, how, how shall they be able to land on something tiny like this? I mean, if we look at this, it's another point that we simply think, you know, it's impossible. How should that work out? And that's another very strong thing that you can achieve. Um, what Red Bull was doing here, I mean, this was like spot on to their target audience of like adrenaline junkies. Um, rumors said it was roughly about $30 million that costed this marketing stunt, but the media budget, you know, the, the media value was way over a billion because basically everyone tuned in and wanted to see the, the impossible to happen. And coming back to SpaceX and, and Elon Musk, I mean, as you know, he has a different, uh, a second company that is quite successful, which is Tesla. And there is one very powerful statement that he did when he introduced the Model 3. Tesla, uh, why does Tesla exist? Why, why are we making electric cars? Uh, why does it matter? Um, it's because it's very important to accelerate the transition to sustainable transport. So you need to, you need to bear in mind that was the opening statement from the Model 3 presentation. So, I mean, as you can tell by my funny accent, I'm German. 
and every you know every single german car manufacturer would start it with the car <laughs> you know here's the car it has whatever 200 horsepower more it 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 uses less you know uh, fuel etc so this would be the traditional way to start a presentation of a car not him so he starts with something really powerful he he takes a step back and he says like hey why are we actually doing this and this is something that that is super powerful in in any type of thing that that you guys are doing whether it's movies or or a digital product it's thinking about what's the motivation behind that what's what's actually the the meaning of what we are doing and if you're successful in like laying that out people can buy into your your vision so you know, if Tesla decides to build these solar uh, roofs, I mean, of course, we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. If they're about like climate change and CO2 level, that makes sense. Whether they're doing power storage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's something that's really relevant to us because we buy into their vision. Another thing about Tesla, just to finish up on Tesla, I mean, to call a button ludicrous mode, that's that's just genius. And I mean, you know, other other electric car manufacturers they have a similar button basically what this button does is like to give maximum power to to the acceleration but no one dares to call it ludicrous mode i mean again like i'm i'm german that's like beyond anything we would imagine we don't even have a german word for that or you know a bioweapon defense button like you know my my car has probably the same button it basically is just like a 99 percent filter out of pollution but they call it the bioweapon defense button um why i'm mentioning it is yeah of course it's like you know people seek the extraordinary the unexpected and this is of course social media gold so you have these thousands and thousands of youtube videos and pictures on twitter and facebook etc where people are like hey well, i just pushed the ludicrous mode button so it's it's really the extraordinary and this is true for any type of of media or channel that we go into so whether if it's like an ad in in New York Times for Game of Thrones that is stick uh, to us or whether it's like guerrilla marketing or stuff you, that you can do on the pavement or you know whether it's like placing a giant dragon skull on a beach overnight as a guerrilla marketing stunt I mean this basically makes you seen and heard I loved actually that one just to finish on 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 the Game of Thrones topic um, I don't know if you if you know about this one but they placed a giant statue of King Joffrey which you know is not like a very likely character and it's like super solid like uh, you know really a concrete statue and you had to tweet one million times to this address that it actually toppled down <laughs> so and of course people you know wanted to get rid of it so they they started to tweet something that gets us like known or excited is like what what amazon if they talking about drone delivery it's it's hard to look away i mean it's something like what, what do you mean you you're going to fly drones uh, into the backyard of my home um, and amazon is a perfect example of something where a company is entirely built around customer needs so it's almost like that amazon goes along the the maslow pyramid of of human needs and just thinks about anything what they can do to make it very uh, um, pleasant to all of us and that's again a very very uh, powerful thing so without going too much into details because you all of uh, all of you know know amazon but it's just genius how the entire organization is is focused around that um, whether it's like same day delivery without an hour or whether it's these buttons where you just push a button and something is delivered um, so we have about like 20 of these in the office and it's just like cool like toilet paper is out you press the button and uh, out one hour later it's there or like i've said the the amazon echo with iot just to be physically present in the household i mean with that amazon becomes part of of daily life and customer needs are of course super diverse so they range from a to to z whether it's environmental issues or whether it's all the way to health um, so uber for instance they have now something where you can order a flu shot via uber so you're basically saying where you are and and you say you want to have a flu shot and actually a nurse is coming to you and gives you the the, the flu shot so you 
can order it via Uber. And of course, there are these times when you actually don't know what you need, and those are exactly those times where you might want to seek inspiration from, a, from an influencer. Now, I've chosen this example because I already showed you uh, this, this girl, which is like my, my, um, my daughter is super like, attracted to. This guy is definitely like my daughter would have, like she wouldn't like him. It's totally, this is not a millennial topic. So I, I chosen that example because there are influencers for all age groups and, and all topics. So this is definitely someone that I follow and, and I really, really love what he is doing. So it's not a, an, an age thing, whether you feel yeah like inspired by these folks. And just to give you one example, like, the airline Emirates, they decided to upgrade him to, to first class. The video that he shot received 25 million views. So that was probably the best upgrade the company ever was able to pull off. And I would just put him to first class, let him uh, do a video clip about it, and, and this is the outcome. And it got a lot of media coverage, etc., etc. So these Influencer, I think they're super relevant to, to, uh, to most of us because they're like extremely authentic. Um, it's they, they give us inspiration, etc. And as a, as a brand, it's really possible to actually, you know, go after these guys. So whether it's Deutsche Telekom or a Red Bull with their Music Academy or Intel with the Creators Project, GE. So there are all these examples where actually brands create content that is, uh, yeah, targeting these 2.5%. One, one service that I already mentioned that surely got kicked off a lot and a lot of attention by the influencers is Uber. And it's another example that's, I'm using it as a segue to, to the next topic, but the, the point is like Uber is a, is a perfect example for something that is extremely user friendly. So especially after their latest redesign, I mean, this, you just notice how everything around that service is focused around the user experience and how easy it is to use. So what I love, for instance, is like it, it doesn't ask you for an address. It asks you where you want to go, <laughs> which is a major difference. So, you know, what we know from, from usually from Google Maps or from like a car or whatever, uh, you type in an address with the latest version of Uber, where do you want to go? So you just type in this hotel name and it gets you there or the restaurant name, etc. And of course, like one giant in that field was, was yeah, Steve Jobs, who literally was able to pull out like, you know, anything that's complicated, make, you know, make everything go away, which is like complicated and just be super reduced to that what people actually really want and that was i mean that was really really the the reason why why apple became so successful now i have to say i have a different opinion on netflix like the previous panel um because for me netflix is genius because you don't see genres and uh the thing is, like, I have tons of foreign movies with Netflix <laughs> because once you start using it in a way um, that, that you like, basically the whole interface is, like, uh, built around you. So what Netflix does, all this in the background, like algorithms and, and all the stuff around the recommendation engine, y you don't notice and you shouldn't notice because, you know, technology should always be an enabler and, and not, not a driver. So as a matter of fact, um, Netflix actually has 80,000 categories, which no one of you will ever, ever recognize. <laughs> and for all of you, Netflix looks different, like, um, because these 80,000 categories, I mean, there is literally categories like romantic Indian crime dramas, evil kid horror movies, or uh, British set in Europe sci-fi fantasy from the 60s. That's the... That's the way of, of granular thinking they, they, they have. Um, these kind of products and services are extremely relevant to us, I think, because they put us into the, the center. It's not like something, a category that you need to fit in. It's something that you feel being in the middle. And you can even make a thermostat sexy, as you know from the Nest example, if it's just like thought through really thoroughly. Now, another example for this putting you in the middle is, is like how Google communicates. So with autonomous driving, for instance, I mean, Google never talks about technology, whether it's like laser or the radar stuff or what they're doing. Um, they're talking about three things. Like one is we will make it available, like mobility will make stuff available to people who are not able to drive, like elderly or blind. That's, of course, 
something very powerful. Second thing is like, we will have less deaths. And the third thing is, just imagine all the time that we will give you while you don't have to drive. So they never talk about technology or whether they want to sell you more ads in your free time. It's really about these three things. And just sticking with Google for a moment, with Google now, it's another like perfect service where they are like pulling together all these stuff to, to make, basically making a really, really relevant service. Again, without you yeah, getting to know, needing to know where you need to head to next to. And that always bring, that, that brings me to the next point, which is around virtual assistants or bots, etc. So this is like the, the Google uh, Assistant that just launched with the launch of the new phones, like with the, with the Pixel phones. And what's so cool about these virtual assistants or bots is they make brands highly approachable. Because how, you know, how close are you getting if you're like playing a part in the personal messenger stuff? Um, I don't know if you tried out a, a messenger bot. Did, did someone? Yeah, you liked it or? Yeah. 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 So, so for those of you who who haven't, and and I would share that 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 opinion. So, for those of you who haven't tried it out, the the point is like. Facebook Messenger, I mean, used by over a billion people on internationally on the planet. I mean, until recently, it was not possible to, you know, to be in contact with anyone else than a person. Like, you and I would be friends on, on Facebook Messenger and we would exchange stuff. But now, with the platform becoming an open platform, now as a brand, you, you, you know, you can play a role within Facebook Messenger. And it's what you said, it could be very conversational. So you can actually interact with someone as a brand within his environment. Um, Lufthansa did, for instance, something like that you can write out of your, write out of, of your Facebook uh, uh, Messenger, you can search for flight. And what I like about these things is that you don't need to switch platforms, you don't need to switch apps, you don't need to install something from Lufthansa, it's the same environment. Or they have a concierge service, which I probably use really every day. And I mean, you can ask any question and someone will answer it. Um, I, I recently asked, uh, what's the meaning of life? Does someone know the answer? 42. So that was pretty smart idea. Yeah, so if you haven't checked that out, I, I really encourage you or, or can recommend to check out the, the, the possibilities with chatbots and, and conversations around these things. So that was a, like a, a short walkthrough um, about what I would call how you can be relevant to people. Of course, there could be, you know, it's an, an infinite list, but in, in, as a matter of time, I, I've just stick to some. Um, and I hopefully was able to, to place this thing in your head, like that relevance really, really becomes something of importance when you think about different target groups and what you're actually having to say. But bear in mind, um, this was something that is true for now, 2016, and who knows, like in four years, uh, what's relevant there. So it's always something on a timely matter. And I want to close actually with something that I think wraps it up nicely, um, how, how time sensitive it could be. So I'm, you know, I'm really a, a, an Apple fanboy and I was waiting to upgrade my MacBook since four years. What happened was that actually my Apple, the, the company I adore and love and everything, when they, when they brought it out, they actually communicated it around like two things, which is like, oh, it's now thinner and lighter and it has this touch bar, <laughs> which is for someone like me, absolutely not relevant. <laughs> So, you know, as a professional user, I mean, I'm using a keyboard and an external monitor, so I will never ever hit this stupid touch bar with, you know, stuff I don't even care about. And I don't care how thick it is. I mean, I care about 32 gigs of RAM and they don't give me that. Um, when, the, when the iPhone 7 was introduced a few weeks before, I mean, they killed the headphone jack, which with my very expensive headphones was like an insult to me. And as a reason, um, they, they called it courage. Now, guess what? The new one has <laughs> headphones. So it came out after the iPhone 7 where, where Phil Schiller said like, oh, it's, it takes some courage to leave it away, but now it's there. And you see all, all the stuff that's left, there are these two USB-C ports. And with every new generation of MacBooks that I buy, basically, you know, a few hundred euros in adapters are 
gone and I need to buy them again. And just to make things uh, that the whole silliness is like, if you want to listen to music while charging it from a MacBook, you need four adapters. <laughs> and it's over 120 euros. I just made the calculation. So four adapters, 120 euros just to make this thing happen. But uh, as you can imagine, so a, a lot of backlash. And my point is to wrap it up. Um, it, ca it didn't came from the Microsoft lovers like, hey, we always told you it's a stupid product and you've been so stupid to use Apple all these years. No, the, the criticism comes from people like me, like lovers, like people who really are, have grown up with Apple and, and love the brand and feel really disappointed. And in the same week when Apple showed this, I mean, the company that I, I can't even pronounce the name, I can't say it, it's like, it's, uh, it hurts me, it really hurts me in my heart, but actually they've done a really good job. And it's a beautiful product, and it's a new way of interface, and it's a new way of haptical things, I mean, that's a gorgeous machine. Um, they introduced basically like, you know, mobile apps where you can scan things in 3D, uh, the HoloLens is an amazing product. The Microsoft Band is an amazing product. I mean, in the same week when, when Apple disappointed so much of, uh, so, so many of us, I mean, this company from Seattle basically killed it. I mean, Microsoft done, a, now I said it, Microsoft done a really, really good job. Uh, and I have to say, you know, within a single week, like uh, a brand was able to basically really push itself down to the to the hell like and the other company really came back from the dead so far and become really really sexy so with this i really would like to to thank you for um, giving me the pleasure to to talk about this thing and yeah all i'm saying is try to be relevant thank you very much